Good morning. Okay, ready? Let's sing hello. Hello, cha cha cha. Hello, cha cha cha. Hello, and how are you? Cha cha cha. I'm fine, cha cha cha. I'm fine, cha cha cha. And I hope that you are too, cha cha cha. Okay, friends, let's go over what we've been learning so far. Let's go over the letter of the week. What letter is this, guys? Good, it's the letter T. Could we say T, T? And what sound does T make? T says ta, ta. Could we say ta, 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 ta? Good, like. Ta, ta, turtle. Ta, ta. Turtle. Good. Can we say T, T, ta, ta? Very good. Now let's go over our sight word. Our sight word for this week is N O T. What does N O T spell? N O T spells not. Can we say not? Not. Good. And my sentence is. This is my sentence. My sentence is, I am not in your center. Can you guys read that? Because you know most of the words in here already. Ready? Read it for me. Not center. Right, let's say it together. I am not in your center. Very good. And then let's do our word family. So we have the A T word family. A T says at. Can we say at? At. So what letter is this, guys? It's the letter C. What sound does C make? C says ka ka. Then we're gonna add at. So we have k at k at k. At. What does that say? Cat, like kitty cat. Meow. Can we say cat? Cat. Good. What letter is this? It's the letter R. What sound does R make? R says R, R. And then we're going to add at. So we have R, at. R, at. R, at. R, at. What word is that? Rat. Very good. Can we say rat? Rat. Good. What letter is this? The letter B, what sound does B make? B says B, B, and then we're going to add at. So we have B, at, B, at, B, at. What word is that? Bat, right, like a bat that flies. Can we say bat, bat? Go, what letter is this? It's the letter H, what sound does H make? H says H, H. Then we're going to add at. So we have H, at, H, at, H, at. What word is this? Hat, like a hat that we put on our head. Hat. Okay, and then we'll do the last one we've done already, and then I'll teach you one more. Well, enter this. S. S says S. Right? And we're going to add at. So we have S. At. S. At. S. At. What does this say? Sat, like I sat down. Sat. And the last one I'm going to teach you. For this week, at least I'll teach you one more next week, and we'll be all done with this word family. What letter is this? It's the letter P. What sound does P make? P says P, P. And then we're going to add at. So we have P, at, P, at, P, at. What word is this? It's pat. Like you pat something on the head. Oh, uh, grab one of the guinea pigs. But Tyrion literally just ran away from me. As I was about to say that, maybe he knew. So we pat, right? Like you pat somebody on the head. You pat your lap. Could we say pat, pat? Good. That's going to be our last word for this week. I'll teach you another one next week. Cool. So remember, every word's going to rhyme because they have the same endings, words that end in the same sound rhyme. Could we say at, at, cat, cat, rat, rat, bat, bat, hat, hat, sat, sat, hat, pat. Very good, guys. 
Okay. Now we're going to talk more about our water unit. So first things first, I want to talk about the four different types of things that come out of the clouds. What are the name of the things that come out of the clouds? We call that precipitation. Can we say that together? Precipitation are things that fall out of the clouds. So what is the type of uh, precipitation that falls out of the clouds during the spring as a liquid. What do we call that? It's rain, right? Rain is our liquid water that falls out of our clouds when it's warm. What about when it's winter and it's colder? This warm liquid water, remember, freezes and turns into a solid. What is the type of weather we have a lot during the winter? What falls out of the clouds? We have our snow, right? Our snow happens when water freezes and turns cold. There's another type of winter weather where the water turns into tiny little chunks of ice, right? It also begins with the letter S. We call it what? Sleet. Sleet. Sleet is when tiny chunks of ice fall out of the clouds. We had this the other day. Sleet. Now our last one. Is our big chunks of ice, except think like the stuff that falls out of the freezer coming out of the sky. Big chunks of ice. We have our hail. Remember that happens a lot during thunderstorms in the summer. Could we say hail? Hail. So these are our four types. Could we say rain, snow, sleet, and hail are our four types of precipitation. They're the four types of water that can fall out of the clouds. The other thing we learned was that water could be in three states or three different types of water, right? So the first type or state of water is our kind that comes out of our faucet, right? The kind we drink, the kind we swim in. What do we call that? We call that a liquid. Could we say liquid? Liquid. Liquid's the water we, we swim in, wash our hands in, take a bath in, and drink. That's our liquid water. Can we say liquid? Liquid. Now remember, this liquid water, when it gets cold, we could say freezes. When it freezes and gets cold, we it turns into hard solid, right? Like our ice. Can we say solid? Solid. And our last type was the one, remember, where I boiled the water on the stove, I heated it up with the stove, and then it rose up into the sky as a gas or water vapor, a steam, okay? So that's our last type, it's a gas, the kind that floats up into the air as a gas. So liquid, solid, gas. So remember, our water can change between these three when it changes temperature. Remember, temperature is a word for hot or cold. So if I want to change my water from a liquid to a solid, what do I have to do with it? To make it hot or cold. I'm going to make it cold, right? I take my liquid water, remember I put it in the freezer to make it cold, and that turned it into a solid ice. What if I want to go the other direction? What if I want to make it melt? How do I make things melt? Well, I heat up my solid, and then it melts back into a liquid. Okay, it gets hot. I think our snowman in the sun, it melts and turns back into a liquid. But we could also change our water to a gas, too, remember? How do I change it from a gas? Well, if I heat up my liquid water, like I said, like putting it on the stove, it gets hot and then it turns into a gas. And then to go back the other direction, if I want to make my gas back into a liquid, remember I have to make it cold. Like remember I showed you on the top of my coffee the other day and then it'll turn back to a liquid. So these are the three types of water. Now we're going to take all of that information that we just learned and use it to talk about the water cycle, which if you were at my my small group lesson before you saw. So we're going to take all that information we just learned and learn about the water cycle now. So what is the water cycle? Well, the water cycle, we talked about how the water comes out of the clouds, right? So how did it get there? It's not magic. Someone just wave a magic wand and was like, it's a cloud, it's going to rain. That's not how this happens. So let's start from the beginning. We talked last week about where we can find water. So here I drew a lake. Okay, pretend this is a lake. It's not the best drawing, but pretend it's a lake. So it's full of lots of water. Water in our lake is liquid, right? It's the type we can swim in. 
me drink. So here's Mr. Sun. So Mr. Sun is heating up our lake. It's a liquid. What happens what to water that gets heated up when it's a liquid? It turns into a gas, right? And it goes up. So our water heats up, okay, and turns into a gas. We call that, ready, it's a fancy word, evaporation. Can we say that? Evaporation. Evaporation means the water, the liquid water gets heated up and it turns into a gas. We call that evaporation. Can we say that one more time? Evaporation. So then, after this water evaporates, it starts to turn colder again. When it turns colder, it turns back into a liquid. Remember when we take our gas and make it colder again, it turns back into a liquid. So these liquid, this liquid turns into a tiny water drop. And then there's lots of tiny water drops that stick together and stick together and stick together. So they keep sticking together. This liquid water sticks together, sticks together, sticks together. And guess what it makes? A cloud. Okay. This step also starts with C, like cloud. It's called condensation. This is when our liquid water drops stick together, stick together, stick together, and make a cloud. Can we say condensation? Condensation. So that's where the clouds come from. But then there's so much water that the cloud gets heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier until it drops all the water. And what do we call that? What do we call when the cloud drops all the water out? It comes down as rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Well, where do we learn that word? What do we call the rain, snow, sleet, or hail that comes out of the cloud? We call it, we know this word already, precipitation. Can we say that? Precipitation. We know that one already. But guess what? The precipitation now goes back down into our lake. And now what happens? So now it's liquid water again. Then the sun heats it up. It turns into a gas. It goes up into the sky as evaporation is gas. Then it cools down into liquid water again, which then sticks together, sticks together, sticks together to make our cloud is condensation. That cloud gets heavy. It drops the water as precipitation, which then goes back into the water, which then turns into a gas, which turns into a cloud, which turns into rain, which goes into the water, which heats up and turns into a cloud, which turns into rain. And you get where I'm going. It keeps going forever and ever 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 in a big circle. So this, friends, is the water cycle. Cycle just means a big circle, a circle that never stops. So interestingly enough, the water that we drink has been around forever, okay? It's the same type of water that the dinosaurs drank. Because this cycle just keeps going on forever and ever and ever. It keeps going and going and going in this cycle, okay, in this big circle. So that's what the water cycle is. It's how the water travels on the earth. So I'm going to teach you guys a song. Some of my friends who were here this morning already know it. For those of you who don't, I'm going to teach it to you now and everyone else. Let's just sing along. So remember I said it, it's a cycle. Okay, so we're going to go like this. We're going to make a big circle. This is our cycle. Everyone show me your cycle, your big circle. Ready? Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It goes. So now we're going to go up. Up as evaporation. Now we're going to make clouds. Forms clouds is condensation. Now go back down. And goes down as precipitation. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And then it starts all over again. So good thing one more time. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Water travels in a cycle, yes it does, yes it does. It goes up as evaporation, forms clouds as condensation, goes down as precipitation, yes it does, yes it does. So those are the steps of the water cycle. So now we're going to read a story about a snowflake. <coughs> but it's a different story than the one I read this morning to our friends who were in our small group. Okay, so we're going to read this book about snowflakes. It's called The Water, the Snowflake, A Water Cycle Story. It's a little different from the other one we read before. Let's see my video. January. 
On a moonless night, a tiny snowflake fell from a great cloud. So here's our precipitation. It floated slowly downward with thousands of other snowflakes coming to rest on the jagged peak of a mountain. February. A wind whistled over the mountain, carrying the snowflake back up, up, up into the air. The snowflake twisted and spun, swirling into a pond on the mountainside. The snowflake melted into a droplet. So remember, melted goes from solid to a liquid. But as the days grew colder, the pond froze. So then, as it got cold again, it turned back from a liquid into a solid. March. As the sun grew warmer, the ice began to melt. So now it goes back from a solid to a liquid. The snowflake became a drop of water once again. It fell through a crack in the, the rocky pond bottom and trickled down into the ground. So here's our groundwater, remember? We said this is where we get our drinking water from. Down it sank into the blackness within the mountain. Along with millions of other drops, it splashed into an underground stream that flowed deep in the earth. April, this will be next month. After a long journey, the stream turned upward, bubbling in the ground through an icy spring. Sparkling in the sunlight, the droplet rushed into a brook. It danced along some stones and spilled over a waterfall. Here's our waterfall. And surged into a raging river. The droplet flowed past villages and cities under a gray bridge where cars and buses carried people to and fro. Hmm, this kind of looks like our city, doesn't it? That looks like the Chrysler building to me. This could be our city. May. A shiny metal pup, pump sucked the droplet through a maze of zigzagging pipes into the irrigation system of a nearby farm. That irrigation is means a sprinkler system. It's how they're watering the plants. Some more plants need lots of water. It spun through a long rubber hose, swished into a spinning sprinkler, and squirted into the air. The droplet flew in a great arc, landing on the leaf of a cabbage plant. June. In the chill of morning, a heavy blanket of fog rolled in across the farm. Ooh, we haven't talked about that one yet. Fog. This one, it's really, it looks like almost like there's clouds on the ground and it's really hard to see. The droplet slowly evaporated. Remember, that means from turning to a liquid into a gas. And floated up, up, up into the thick grayness. But soon the rising sun began to bake the air as the fog rose high into the sky and became a cloud. So it evaporated, it turned into a gas, and then it turned into a cloud as condensation. Oh, Dusty, it's okay, don't cry. I don't know why Dusty's crying. July. The cloud then joined a mass of dark storm clouds. Lightning flashed, thunder rumbled, and a torrent of raindrops dived back towards the earth. So we have a lot of precipitation this time. The droplet rocketed downward and splashed into the clear waters of a reservoir. Reservoirs where they hold water for people to drink. It's like extra water, so they hold it. So when people need water to drink, that's where it can come from. They need extra. It was sucked through a series of filters that removed all the dirt particles until the pure water remained. So remember, this is our drinking water. Do you guys want to drink a bunch of dirt? No, ugh, right? So they take it out. They call it a filter. It takes out all the gross stuff. Kind of like I have a Brita filter. It attaches to my sink and it takes all the yucky stuff out. So when I drink the water, it tastes good. So that's what they do with our drinking water. They filter all the gross stuff out. August. The droplets swoosh through a long metal pipe. I was pumped into a smaller pipe and then a smaller pipe and a smaller pipe where it stopped and started and stopped and started and stopped and started again in a herky-jerky motion. So it's going through all these pipes. September. In her bathroom, a young girl turned on the faucet and a droplet poured out of the bathroom sink. The girl dipped her hands into the water, lifted a droplet to her cheek. A second later, it was falling, falling, falling back into the sink, splishing, splashing, spinning through the drain and down the pipe. So I'm back into the pipes. After a long journey through the pipes, the droplet plopped back out into the ocean. It flowed past fields of waving seagrass over corals of many color and into the mouth of a great striped fish. <gasps> Reminds me of rainbow fish. 
The water then passed through the fish's body and returned to the sea. November. Rising up to the ocean surface, the droplet was pulled steadily towards the shore. On the crest of a mighty wave, it bubbled into foam and then crashed onto the sandy beach of a tropical island. December. In the sunlight of a winter's morning, the droplet evaporated. Remember, that means turning from liquid to a gas. So it's going back up. It rose into the air, entering a great cloud. So now it condenses again. A whistling wind pushed the cloud across the sea, past cities and towns, beyond an icy spring and over a raging river. It drifted past a waterfall and a frozen pond. On a moonlit night, the tiny snowflake started from the clouds. Hey, that's where we started. So now we're back to a snowflake again. The tiny snowflake floated slowly downward with thousands of other flakes coming to rest on the jagged peak of a mountain. So just like our water cycle, it keeps going around and around, right? We're back where we started. And then we could literally repeat this whole book over again and then come back here and keep going and going and going and going. So remember, this never stops. The end. So here's some facts about the water cycle. For years and years, water has been freezing, melting, evaporating, condensating, and freezing again. It travels all over the world, and in its many forms, water has been around for longer than people have. In fact, water has been here almost as long as the Earth itself. That's why I told you dinosaurs could have drank in the water we have. So the next time you throw a snowball, or jump into a swimming pool, or drink some ice water on a hot summer day, stop and think for a moment because some of that very water might have tumbled over Niagara Falls. It might have risen as a morning mist in the jungles of Africa, or lay frozen for centuries in a giant glacier in the North Pole. Computer side, sorry. It may have been sipped by your great-grandmother in a cup of afternoon tea. It may have been used by Abraham Lincoln, who was one of the first presidents, to scrub his hands before dinner in the White House. It may have even been guzzled by a thirsty Tyrannosaurus Rex in a prehistoric swamp millions of years ago. The end. So tomorrow, friends, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the water cycle and I'll read you some more water cycle books and we'll sing our song again. So bye guys, I'll see you tomorrow.